Welcome back. Hey, it's been a while, EHS, hasn't it? We can see that, what was it, some months ago, I don't know if it shows here in one of these graphs exactly when I hit 9,998 rated games, but uh, today seems like a good day to play a couple more games, right? That's what we do on this website, is we play games. So, uh, yeah, I think I got everything set up correctly. Should we give it a go? Normally, I play faster time controls, but since this is a bit more of a momentous occasion, let's play some Rapid here. And just get paired with somebody for our rated games and see what our rating's going to be at the end of it. Although, I don't actually get to see my rating because I have my rating masked everywhere. Um, you all can see my rating, but I can't. Oh, this is interesting. So I generally don't play the 10-5 pool. Apparently 10-5 is not a hotbed. Okay, we could play some Blitz then. Folks like Blitz. Good luck. Um, yeah, lately we've taken to playing the Alicine, so... Or Alakine. It looks kind of fun, right? I'm not sure I completely remember how to play this, but... Um, I remember it's fun. I think even Knight G8 is playable. Alright, our overlay looks fine. So as long as I don't shift off the window too much, things should be okay. Oh, I think normally we play the Knight to D5 and then B6, and then you have this C4 joust and all that. So yeah, on move 2, we've taken our opponent out of book. And we'll claim that's an achievement. Um... Alright, so I protect my F7 point, so I survive the opening. Um, do I want to play C5 or A5? C5 frees my other pieces, so C5 is probably the best move here. And they're going to oppose my using of this square. They're probably going to play D3. Or they're just going to like let me go ahead and play this. Okay, works for me. Um, knights are fun. There is a saying to develop the knights before the bishops, so we develop both knights. Then there's our bishop. It's developed. Uh, we'll see whether or not they feel like breaking this pin. Pin's still intact. Their argument is that I've not castled yet, and that is true. So far I haven't castled. But we can castle. Um... It's interesting too. So if I try to support this, this becomes a weakness that's still difficult to hold on to. Um, I think it's best at this point, now that I've blunted this bishop, either they do pawn takes and they have this isolated pawn, or they do queen takes, and this does break the pin, and that's unfortunate. But um, yeah, we've got more center pawns than they do. They're probably not going to push c4, c5 in any hurry here. And I have bishop g6 hitting this pawn at my leisure. So, this looks fine to me. So yeah, today we're playing this rated game 9999. And then we'll do one more, and then we'll have analytics for our first 10,000 rated games. And maybe we should explore the analytics a bit more and figure out, um, or the insights a bit more and figure out what it is we can learn from having played so many games. Um, so this queen is a problem. This queen's got to go. They're going to pile a rook onto here next. So before I move my queen away, I need them to move theirs away. They're probably going to play queen d2 though. And that's probably going to result in me playing knight e4, exchanging queens and knights, threatening the c-pawn. And again, I have more central pawns than they have right now. Um, so I have a very slightly better endgame. Uh, but yeah, I need to be aware of tactical threats. So if they're going to like bring the rook over and have three pieces attacking my knight, well then the knight's got to move, and that's bad news for me. Yeah, so... Um, even though they didn't play queen d2, I could still move my knight. Probably still should. Um, 
sure there is a shot with G4 at some point, maybe. But uh, yeah, they've they have a space advantage. I have uh, the center pawn. So yeah, I think I eventually should be able to control more space. It's just going to take a long time. This is interesting. All right. So now we attack the knight and the queen. Here we attack the queen and the pawn. And so we have two pieces attacking this. I think uh, Mr. No Joke calls this a two attacky. Is that the correct term for this when we have multiple pieces hitting this? Is that a two attacky? Or is it a two attacky when you're hitting this? I can't remember. Um, regardless, it seems like a good opportunity for me to hit the queen again. If I could remove this knight, then potentially I could win the queen somehow. Um, so, yeah, let's see where the queen goes next. So now if the knight weren't defending this point, I could win a queen. But if I get too greedy, they've got rook d1, and it's not so easy for me to make threats. If my knight takes the pawn, my knight's not coming back. That's kind of an issue. Um, so, yeah, I think it make uh, This is tricky. All right, we'll talk about this in a bit. So I'm attacking the knight. Uh, they saw this, and I saw that I could go here. And I'm not opposed to playing wild gambits, and we might be in the midst of one right now, because they might play bishop e3. Um, bishop e3, I might do rook takes knight, I might do queen takes pawn. There's a lot of stuff going on here. Note, if rook takes, if queen takes, we have this fork. So, yeah. There's no easy way out of this. Okay, originally I was banking on queen takes pawn, bishop takes knight, queen takes here. And that'd be an interesting gambit of sorts. Uh, that doesn't seem to work so well. So, alternatively, we've got pawn e5, which is boring. Um, <laughs> relatively speaking. But it's not bad, as far as I can see. Pawn e5, queen takes, bishop f6, bishop takes knight, bishop takes queen, bishop takes queen. I take the bishop, and I'm even here. Um, I've got bishop f6 to support the knight without having to give up my pawn. Uh, that's worth considering. I've got rook takes... oh. Um, I don't have any shot that completely wins here. That's unfortunate. If I take, check, here, take, take, my knight retreats, the bishop takes my pawn, I take here. I think it's... it's a sacrifice. I play sacrifices when I'm playing for an audience. So, there's the sack. Is it sound? Probably not. Is it what I would play? Yes. So, we're playing it. Um, now, they... Also, this vision zig of taking the knight is kind of interesting. Also, rook takes knight is kind of interesting, but I think this actually is better for them, but we're playing it anyway just so I can have some fun. Turns out you can have fun at chess without winning. Um, but, yeah. Note, if I play bishop d6, they have king g1, and then my knight is stuck defending the bishop. So otherwise, this would be a nice fork. As it stands right now, yeah, I've sacrificed an exchange for basically nothing um, other than emotional compensation. But um, we'll prevail somehow. Right. 
So we can hit this pawn over here. We should be careful not to get back rank mated. If I take the doubled pawn, I haven't achieved a whole lot. Um, so I think next I play h5 to anchor my bishop on f5. Or maybe I take this pawn here. I'm not sure. Um, if I take the pawn, bad stuff happens. Yeah, so let's... I could play f6 to break the... No, it's not great. Um, yeah. We're going to play this and assume things are okay. But yeah, to me, this variation was more interesting than trying to win the game in some slow endgame battle. Um, instead, we're going to get fire, and it'll be exciting. Somebody might get burned, and it's probably me. Um... Okay, if we can get our rook on c2, then maybe it's worth exchanging some things. Uh, if I play bishop d6... I mean, this is why we played this game, right? To try to get some exciting tactical variations. So... Um... I don't know how exciting these are going to be, but our endeavor was to try to get something exciting. So they could take ng7 and win another pawn. It's the principal bolt response here. Then we've got bishop here, pawn there, and who knows? We might prevail somehow, despite everything hanging. There, it is said that there is a <laughs> the advantage of having the knight in the end game. Yeah, it can be quite immense because people forget how knights move. I think my opponent's just going to take my knight though, and uh, because they had an attack on my bishop, there was nothing I could really have done to stop this capture. So we'll just pre-move this. And yeah, we tried to get an interesting position. Our opponent tried very hard and succeeded in denying us that possibility. Um, I don't have a good way to defend this, so we'll play it forward. Oh, note if I try to defend it this way, I lose my rook, so I can't do that. So yeah, this is straight up hanging another turn in a row. They do see it. All right, so let's exchange some things. I think our opponent's doing a very good job paying attention to every tactic. And consequently, there's really not a whole lot I can do. Yeah, we got a chess stream. <laughs> Imagine that. But yeah, we had to play our 10,000th game eventually, right? This is game 9999 for the record. Although if you look at my user profile, you might see something different. But Hey, free piece. <laughs> Got him. All right. To quote another live streamer. Um, yeah. In chess, recaptures are not mandatory. Um, so, even when things look really bleak, uh, keep an open mind. It, it's exhausting playing competitive chess, really. So, uh, hopefully you enjoy playing winning positions and keep a tactical eye out for stuff. Uh, thanks for the game. I think this was a good game. Although, there were some cheapos for sure. Um, yeah, let's seek another five minute, three second increment. And this will be our 10,000th game for which we get analytics, or for which we do, um, 
what's it? Uh, chess insights. And this time we're actually going to play the correct variation and maybe get some chances. Uh, yeah. So then we'll play g6, bishop g7. All right. There, as I promised, there is g6. And next, bishop g7, unless something crazy happens. All right, there it is. And we've got an even game, right? There's nothing faulty about this. <laughs> Thanks, Teluge. Well, wishing us the best in our 10,000th game. Uh, yeah. Uh, so let's see. Let's give it our all, shall we? Um, <laughs> All right, this doesn't look bad. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Yeah, it was a fun game. Um, so they're threatening bishop h6. To deal with this, let's just move the rook out of the way. So if they play bishop h6, I have the option of retreating. Okay, this is bizarre. Um, sure. We're going to get some interesting pawn structures today. Uh, do I go back to b8? I forget how this line works. We can't go to d4, can we? Knight takes, pawn takes... Yeah, we're good. That's my square now. All right. Yeah, thanks to this pin. <laughs> They're just quite accidental. Uh, we got to play some fun moves here. Now, knight takes c4 seems kind of out. Um, oh, man. It, knight c4 is the kind of move that I would normally play. But do we do this on game 10,000? No, we can't. We can't. That'd be just too nuts. Um, better would be if I just take here. And if they take, I get a free pawn. So, they have to take back this way instead. <laughs> Knight c4 could have been a fun little journey. We'll never know, unless you visit that parallel universe where I played that move. We'll never know what happens in that game. Um, Alright. But yeah, then... Um, interesting don't want to trap my queen just yet. Maybe I do. Maybe trapping the queen's not so bad. Yeah, how bad is it? Bring out the queen early, right? Yeah, 5d chess. Or like the, uh, what do they call it? Entanglement chess. But I think other versions have been made where you can say, I want to like, split the game not necessarily with the whole fifth dimension or inter whatever travel but just being able to play a game in multiple variations uh could be interesting there will be a free software website at some point for uh 5d chess it's in beta right now and eventually it'll be a thing um so look forward to that eventually uh, I do enjoy free software. Um, oh. Oh, oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh, we got some tactics to resolve here. Wait. I think I can maybe survive this if I'm lucky. This is not good. All right, we have to start with this. Oh boy, how do we dig ourselves out of this? And then I think I have to move the rook to avoid this fork. I can move either rook. Um, it's more provocative if I play rook f8. Um, Oh wait, no, they're intending knight d6 as well, so that's a reason to play this. 
Yeah, it looks like game number 10,000 might be a bust. Um, unless I can trick them into playing this. All right. I tricked him. Oh, how witty of me. <laughs> yeah. The, it's difficult to make a high-quality chess variant and also find an immense audience for it. No matter how fantastic your idea is, it's difficult to bring to market. There's a ton of work involved. I shouldn't have taken that. I should have checked here first. Uh, I'm getting rusty, man. All right, let's get the check in. Yeah, because now the king could just run back. Uh, I got so excited about talking about chess variants that, yeah, I forgot about this game. All right. Uh, if I move the rook away, they take my pawn. Well, that's not bad. They've got this defended twice. I don't have any shot to like win something on the spot. Um, man. Okay, we're just gonna give back the exchange in order to get our pieces active. Stockfish is going to hate what I've done, probably because I should have played this check first. And there might have been some other tactical resources available. But yeah, now knight takes a7 as an idea. Oh, that's kind of extraordinary. Sure. Okay, I will evict your knight once and forever. Um... Knight a7 to me looked pretty decent. Um, in contrast, this looks not so easy for them to hold. Okay. I could put my rook on an open file. If they play knight e4, I might just take it. Yeah. Is there something good about their pawn structure here? If there is, I'm missing it. So we'll put take this under control. We already control this square. I'll just put all the pawns on the dark squares and have the knight dance around for however long it takes until our opponent messes up in this very unforgiving endgame. <laughs> uh huh. Sure. All right. King on a dark square. Um, take this dark square under control. Also prevent pawn f4. Mm -hmm. Make some vague threats at trying to grab this pawn while we're at it. Interesting. This is an opportunity. Um, I'm curious how they'll react to this. So if we exchange their bishop and my knight, that looks okay to me. Okay, so there's going to be an open file here momentarily. Um, mm. End games are hard. This is why end games are hard. Positions like this one. Pawn, 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 pawn. I have this covered right now. Um, Alright, we're trying to play knight f4. They're just going to take our knight. But in order to play knight h5, I had to check that I'm not losing here. Uh, am I losing here? I might be losing here. <laughs> I might not have done my homework. Hmm. Yeah, I saw that I could take the pawn, and I figured, hey, that's the end of the variation, right? 
What more could possibly happen after I take the pawn? Oh, no. Uh-oh. Uh, shit. So, that's not good. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's well spotted. Um, I guess I'm lucky today. <laughs> oh, why? So, yeah, normally this pawn advance would be the end of me. But today, uh, we have a fork. So... As long as I play the fork first and don't wait on after them promoting for me to play it. Um, no, I'm probably still screwed here, aren't I? Oh, that's impressive. Wow. What a way to go out. Oh, my. Um... Yeah, there it is. <laughs> Game 10,000. Okay, so what could we have done to not lose this game? Uh, one thing would be calculate. Calculation would probably help. Now comes the other part of the end game, where the opponent is completely winning it, and somehow uh, we're going to draw this. Maybe I needed to recalculate f5 here. All right, there's our free pawn. Uh, they prevent me from playing pawn c4 right now. Um, I think there's some subtle nuance why king g5 is better than... Okay, there we go. Okay, we're not going to see the other, other phase of this endgame where we end up winning a lost endgame, right? Wouldn't that be something? So the bishop covers two flanks at once. Okay. This just got more interesting. Oh no. Not like this. Well, um, is there a Rosen Trophy for something like this? Inquiring minds want to know. Actually, we do have three pawns for the bishop, so it's not... I should not have been so uh, dour about my prospects here. Um, three pawns is not nothing. But, yeah, here in particular, these three pawns seem pretty good. Huh. And since there's an increment, I don't have to worry about losing on time. Unless, like, my mouse breaks. Um. Okay. Okay, so maybe... Maybe some of my evaluations throughout this game were very incorrect. Uh, but yeah, thanks for the game. All right, let's analyze this because I want to know the truth. It was I lost at some point? Uh, but yes, thanks, uh, Teluge, for encouragement on this game. Yeah, so... Uh, after you've done game analyses, uh, I forget if this just applies to computer analyzed games or others, and I guess we'll find out momentarily. Yeah, so this end game from here on out apparently was in my pocket until some. Well, no, apparently I'm still better even after whatever it was I did here. Yeah, King G5 I did as a defensive idea to try to exchange all the pawns, but. Um, yeah, king g3 is actually best because it kind of forces the promotion. Um, so their last winning position was here, and they just blitzed d6. And, I mean, they bluffed me. I thought I was lost after they played d6, but um, I was lucky. So we'll take it. That's a win in our book. And what this means is now after this game, I can go over to Chess Insights, update my insights, 
And we can see over 10,000 rated games. Um, do I gain more rating points against weaker or stronger opponents? So against much weaker opponents, I gain rating points. Against... wait, no, actually I lose rating points against much weaker opponents. Against a sample size of 3,704 games. I generally lose half a point per game. And against all other categories, I tend to win rating points. How quickly do I move each piece in Bullet and Blitz? Well, uh, we push a lot of pawns. Uh, pawn move time is about 3 seconds. Uh, the knight move time is about 4 seconds. and uh, The king move time is about 2.6. Probably mostly at end games where I've already lost the game and I'm just moving the king quickly. Or, I don't know, it's just maybe in end games in general. You could take these queries and further filter them and ask, well, okay, in Bullet and Blitz, how long does it take me to move each piece? But, you know, then I want to filter this for the game phase. What about middle game positions? So, yeah, this is an extremely powerful tool. Uh, I don't know exactly which questions you have, but you can see it takes me about the same time to move every piece, except for the king in the middle game. I guess most many king moves could be pre-moves. I guess there's not a pre-move counter in here. Maybe there should be. Um, yeah, what's the win rate of my favorite openings is white. I can't really... I guess it's the French defense, the Scandinavian, etc. Uh, it asks what's my win rate of all the most popular openings I play. French defense has shown up 332 times, um, and I win that. Uh, about as often as I win the rest of these. Uh, the King's Pawn game, where it doesn't fall into any of the other King's Pawn openings uh, I tend to win. And one I tend to lose would be the Uncommon opening out of a sample of 66 games. How often do I punish blunders um, made during each game phase? So in the opening... Um, Oh, I guess I'm pretty uniform that 75% in the opening, or 72% in the opening, 71.8% in the middle game, 73.3%. So I'm slightly more opportunistic in end games than in other game phases. Um, okay, do I gain rating points when I fail to castle? Nope. <laughs> Or when I don't castle kingside. So I castle queenside, I usually lose. And I also lose rating points. And, um, yeah, it's okay. When I exchange queens, what happens? I win. But I win a lot anyway. So a baseline for comparison. Is there a way to filter this for queen trade versus no queen trade? Can I get both of these? Um, yeah, so I can see... 62% victory when I do exchange them, 62.8 versus 62.5, so I'm very slightly winning more when queens are exchanged. Um, what's the average rating for opponents in each variant? Uh, make with that what you will. And how well do I move each piece in the opening? Well, that's funny. Average sent upon loss by piece move. So on average, when I move my queen, I lose more than half a pawn. Uh, yeah. I don't know overall. I guess if you were to aggregate all these things together, I'm probably losing somewhere between a third and a half of a pawn every time I make a move in the opening. That's just my style. It's adventurous. Uh, sometimes it's rewarded, often it's not, but it's good fun. Anyway, this is the Chess Insights feature. I've published my insights, shared it with everybody, so anybody can like look at what openings I play and am I good at end games and that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, this is a fun feature. Not many people know about it. You just go to your profile page and right there it, you can get analytics from your games. And you don't have to publish it for you to be able to use it. Um, yeah, so we've played 10,000 games. Let's play a few more just for fun. And this time, this will just be straight up three minute. 
There we go, we got a wing gambit. Do I know how to play the wing gambit? The real question is, does my opponent know how to play the wing gambit? <laughs> Who plays the wing gambit? It's really the other question. But, uh, there we go. Yeah, I'm just straight up down a pawn in the opening, so... It's okay. You can be down a pawn. There are other pieces on the board. Um, so, let's see. Let's try to break this open. Are they going to play d5 before I play d5? No. Alright, I'm playing d5. That square is now mine. So I'm curious if they're going to play this to prevent me from doing bishop g5. Or, yeah, they're going to play out, and they're not afraid of me playing bishop g5. Or maybe they're afraid and just not admitting it. Alright. Now are you going to move the bishop back? Because I can still play pawn d6 here. Nope. No fear. Alright. Are they going to play pawn g5 now? And then are they going to castle after doing this? Keep in mind, I just gave up a pawn to get this. So, like, this cost me one pawn to have some good fun here. There's, as far as I know, there's not a way to measure analytics for, like, how much fun you're having. But I think we're having fun. All right. So now we're threatening this sort of stuff, and maybe this to follow. Probably not Rick takes immediately, but, you know, just got to line up as many threats as we can, give them something to think about. All right. Um, do I sack this pawn too, just for fun? Oh, do I take the knight now? Yeah, what happens if I take here? Are they going to take back with the d-pawn? They do. If I take on b4, I mean, this activates my rook, so I should do this. Okay. Now if I take on f6, they're going to take on f2. We do still have to pay some attention to what they're doing. But yeah. They are solidly one pawn ahead here, and I'm just pretending not to care. And so far, pretending's going pretty well. Um, I think they like their bishop, so I'm going to hit the bishop. I did consider, like, bishop takes and trying to get some tactics working there, and it doesn't seem to pan out. I might get this in a little bit later. And by that I mean probably next move. Uh, um, that way they don't have rook d8 uh, hitting my queen. All right. Finally, some fun tactics. Um, I think I just take here, right? All right, let's exchange this and offer a queen trade, because that seems kind of fun. So that breaks their attack on f2. And yeah, I'm not sure if and when I get to play bishop e7 and collect the b-pawn back, although they probably have rook fb8. Well, I've also got rook e4, so like, there's stuff I can do. They just give back the pawn. I say, you know, this isn't worth it. They're probably right. Um, oh, they're going to take my pawn, aren't they? No, they aren't. I know how this game works. If they take my pawn, I take their knight. Yeah. I can spot tactics. Um, so they try to break off my attack. Um, interesting. Okay, 
so I've collected a pawn. I'll try to use my other pieces now. So I'm attacking this, I'm attacking this, I'm attacking this. They have some choices to make. I might move my bishop soon and be attacking more things. Um. Okay. Um. Oh, that's interesting, too. If I'm not careful, bad stuff happens. All right, let's hit the rook. If they take my knight, I take the rook. Um, if they move this rook, I move my knight. We've got a nice little balancing act here. Um, note, I've accidentally trapped their knight. So if they push g6, that's a free knight for me. Uh, are, okay, they see that too, or they carefully avoid it, but this is getting punched in the face. Um, yeah, that's fine, right? Um, I kind of forgot how chess tactics work. All right, we're giving up a pawn because I can't calculate. Calculating's hard. Oh, sorry, I meant I'm not giving up a pawn. I'm just failing to win a pawn. If there was potential for me to win a pawn, that potential is now lost. If they do knight... Well, if they do knight e3, I take the knight. If they kick my knight, I do knight d4. Right, knight d4 protects my pawn. I could play g uh, h3 and get my king into the center. And once my king is attacking stuff, good things can happen. You want to use all your pieces, and the king is a piece. Um. Yeah, to evict this knight. It's going to require my king's assistance. Um, I have to be careful not to drop anything. I'm probably going to drop something in time pressure. All right, let's try not to drop our pawns on that side of the board. And games are hard, especially when there's not time to think. We're going to drop our rook to a fork eventually. It's just one of those facts of life. Okay. We actually built up a nice attack here. I'm impressed. I don't know about you. Um, I have to take this. Hmm. <sighs> This is not great. I'm not thinking clearly. Or I'm clearly not thinking is really what that's about. I'm bailing out or trying to. Okay. It pays to know your end games, doesn't it? Because then you don't have to think about them. You just play this part of the game automatically.
also pays to pay attention. So yeah, this is going to change uh, my insights. Stockfish is probably going to say I made some mistakes that end game, but we won it. At the end of the day, we got the point. That's what counts. Maybe one more. So. Yeah. End games are fun. They're worth study. Uh, I know these are just blitz games we're talking about here. This isn't some extended adventure where um, at the end of the adventure uh, we've played like a one hour game and somehow uh, finessed a win in the last minute. No, this is just a three minute game. So the stakes are a bit lower, but um, I think it proves the concept that if you can do this sort of thing in Blitz, surely you could win points in slower time controls, too. Uh, this is interesting. Okay. You got my curiosity. Can I take your pawn? How bad is taking this pawn? Maybe it is bad. Uh, if I check here, I lose a rook, right? Maybe I don't want to do that. Yeah, let's back off. Wait, if I check here and then I brought the knight back, then I was actually okay. Whatever. Um, let's... Okay, my rook's not hanging. I don't need to capture... Capturing is optional. That said, it's probably beneficial, because my king's in the center. Uh, we're going to play a king in the center endgame, just for fun. I wonder when the opponent's going to catch on to what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, so if we barricade the square in front of the pawn... It's difficult for them to attack our knight, and it's difficult for them to attack anything, really. So, camping's a legitimate strategy. Yep, we've taken the center. We've set up our, our camp, and now we just have to wait for the opponent to attack us. Um, that'll be fun. There is an open file on this board, so I should try to use it. Okay. Yep, there's the attack. Isn't there a problem with this? There should be a problem. But yeah, maybe I should have played this earlier, but then I would have lost my knight. So let's do it now. We're vaguely pretending to hit this, but this is the real threat. But no, they've covered the square in front of my pawn. Um, interesting. We have tactics now. Yeah, okay, my bishop was kind of sad anyway. It's much happier where it is now. Um... Unfortunately, I don't have magnificent tactics to follow up what I just did. That kind of ends my whole chain of tactics. So we're going to settle for this really sad endgame. And it's going to be okay. Oh, our opponent plays with ambition. That's admirable. Um... So we defend the weakness. 
Also, this pawn is weak once I get a tempo to hit them back. All right, there's my tempo. Let's hit back. Um, interesting. <laughs> okay, we're going to drop our rook back here and get this boring endgame all over again. Um... Oh, oh, they can check me. The check takes priority over my attack. I forgot about that. Uh, yeah, that's kind of an issue, isn't it? I might have been a bit too overzealous trying to entertain myself. All right. Well, hopefully we're not mated. We're definitely mated. Oh, man, that's hilarious. All right. Yeah, okay. Fine. Just give me a file for my rook. Be content with whatever we get here. Yeah, good game. Nicely played. Can't win them all. All right, when did we lose this? When exactly was this lost? And, um, yeah. So we were lost in the opening. We had a good... Oh, wait. How does that win? Queen e2, queen e7, knight d5. All right, so we were lost in the opening. Lost in the end game after I played... After I tried to win it. Let's see. I should have just tried to continue trading pieces and begging for a draw like I was doing most of the game. Uh, I had some chances here, I guess. Uh, Stockfish won't admit it, but night before apparently is not best. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, knight b6 threatening to push a4 is kind of interesting. Knight takes knight is okay. Knight b4 is tragic, because it doesn't actually achieve anything useful. It threatens this pawn, threatens to do this fork, but none of that actually works, so... It would have been better had I simply just exchanged here and tried to take control of this square, and we would have had a really exciting pawn up endgame if we were lucky enough to win a pawn. Uh, otherwise, it would have been a very exciting snooze fest of a, you know, same color bishop, double rook endgame. Double rooks are exciting, but uh, for the reasons we saw in the game, but anyway. Yeah, uh, site we all know and love here is leechess.org. Many folks are live streaming events from around the world. You can check out what they're doing here. I do recommend that. Um, on many occasions, I've enjoyed the Saint, enjoyed the St. Louis Chess Club broadcast, so uh, that would be something I recommend. But anyway, I hope we enjoyed these games we played here together. And uh, yeah, hope you have a good day. See you around.